It's normally the time of year when the freeze dryer goes into overtime and does a lot of extra work, but Redrick's got a birthday party tomorrow. Hey, you might want to spread those out on some of the other sheets. That's a lot. He's got a birthday party tomorrow, and I'm going to make him freeze dry his own Skittles. <laughs> yeah, you. they expand by like double, so, you know, give him some space. We're going to be doing a bunch of beets and a bunch of things with beets, and I want to try doing some beet chips and see how that goes. We did a lot of zucchini last year in slices when the zucchini got too big and was kind of getting woody, and it freeze dried really great. I feel like you're eating more than you're putting on the tray. No. Handful at a time. Come on, man. Save some for the party tomorrow. These will freeze dry in about four or five hours. It doesn't take very long for the Skittles. There's not a lot of moisture in them. All right, Redrick, now for the hard part. Get them in there without spilling them. Slide the trays in. We're gonna show you how hard it is to use this freeze dryer. These are not frozen. You can pre-freeze. I find with the Skittles, it doesn't really matter. They, they go in about the same amount of time because they're just so small and there's hardly any moisture in there. What? Gotta get it in straight. There you go. Okay, two more trays. This is the tricky part. Not spilling. Oh, oh man. That almost went bad. That almost did go bad. Oh, okay. Last one. Last tray. Doesn't have a log on it. We've got a Harvest Right freeze dryer. Love it. It works so good. And I think this is one of their newer pumps. At least it was a couple years ago. I don't have to change the oil every time in it. Still got to change the oil, but. All right, close that up. Make sure it's nice and tight, all the way tight. All right, hit start. Okay, not frozen. Continue. And we're freeze drying. Boom. It'll beep at us when it's done. These Skittles are done. Let me release valve in the back here. All right, Redrick, pull them out. Let's see if they're fluffy enough. All right, let's, let's check it. Are they crunchy? Let's hear if they got that crunch. Nice. All right, let's get them in uh, Ziplocs or whatever. The party. Yep. All right, Redrick and I are actually gonna go do some work in the garden this morning and pick some stuff right after we feed Buttercup. But we're doing a uh, tent cell slash barn cell situation over here at the shop. And we gotta set back up real quick. Jamie is gone. She's picking up Eliza from uh, church camp. And she's been at that for a whole FSY. <laughs> for strength of youth church camp she's been there for a whole week so we got to uh do this without her this morning we'll see if we can make it look as cool as she does redrick here come grab these and just set them up on the top of that there you go cottage we haven't done much in there this week it's been real hot and the ac was busted it needed recharge had a leak for whatever reason we got that fixed got that sorted out so we'll be back in there next week We've been doing a lot of other things anyway. The garden though is looking amazing. It's really taken off. Look at the size of this little pumpkin we got over here. Yeah, the bees love the pumpkins. Ten bees on the one. Oh yeah, they're getting that good pollen. Look at them in there. Jamie's sunflowers are getting tall. They're taller than you, Redrick. Go stand over there. Nice. All right, this is what we're here for today. These beets have got to go. All right, good way to tell if your beets are ready to go is the top's going to start showing. Same with the radishes. You can kind of see the radishes. They poke out the top. That means they're, they're ready. Get in there and grab them one at a time or two, you know, whatever. Shake the dirt off. Okay, just drop them in greens and everything we'll probably give the greens to buttercup and the chickens just just you don't gotta do that just shake it off the marigolds are going strong so i left this tree branch in here for the chickens to play with and they love it they roost on it like crazy buttercup all right girl what's the story do you like beets do you like them I think that's gonna be a win. Huh. Yeah. Oh, get the good scratches. All right. I think it's safe to say. Might have to pace her a little bit. Oh my goodness. Who did this? 
Who did all this? Is that you? Is that you? <laughs> Look how proud he is. Got a big you grew that yourself, right? The cucumbers are overtaking the lettuce. I think we're just gonna cut all the lettuce down and give that to Buttercup, cause she'll love it. It's getting kind of bitter anyway. It's been real hot. It hasn't been very sweet. We'll give that to Buttercup. She doesn't care about the sweetness. She gobbles it up and let the cucumbers have this whole bed. Oh no, every time. Getting too big. You don't look for a day and then you get ones that are too large. Okay, that one will be ready tomorrow. Don't let me forget. Another basket. Let's fill that up too. Let's start getting these beans up. I'm gonna go pull a couple of these uh, chives. I don't have onions, but I'm gonna put these in with my, I'm gonna try pickling some of the zucchini today and we're probably gonna can some of these beets. Here, put these in your bag, in your basket there. Basket. I just put them on the side. Yep, just help it out. Just feed the top in and it'll go. It'll go with the rest on its own. Yeah, that's a big one. Try that. E eat that one, yeah. Oh, those are big looking peas. Oh, shoot. It's fine. Is it bitter? Tastes oh, fine? pretty sweet. All right. The apples are almost ready. We had a ton of apples on here and we had like a big windstorm and uh, heavy rain come through when they were real little and knocked a lot of them off. But what we have will be ready soon. Peaches, this is the first, oh, like, we got peaches last year, but they were tiny little guys. Gotta get these pulled off so this plant keeps producing. There they are. I'm gonna let them get a little riper maybe tomorrow. Starting to get something other than cherry tomatoes in here. Bell pepper. The homegrown bell peppers get funky shapes. And this is what I'm looking for here. I need a couple of these peppers. Here, pinch them so you don't rip the plant. There you go. Oh, that one's getting real big. Okay, there's a couple there. Okay, these peppers are hot peppers. They're little dragon rolls. A little goes a long way. And the tomatillos are working hard. Little update on the figs. We're getting our second harvest. These are ever bearing figs. So we usually get about two harvests, two harvests, two harvests a year. And we're coming up on that usually mid August. The trick is gonna be beating the, uh, the birds out. Some of these are a little small, but they came up when we pulled up the big ones. So, you know, we'll make use of the greens and give them to the Buttercup. Redrick's 12 today, and it looks like he's just gonna make a mess of the couch and eat Skittles. <laughs> I already rinsed these off outside. Some of these are pretty tiny because they pulled up with the bigger that. ones. That's gonna go in Buttercup's bowl. I did not thin them out. I'm not that kind of gardener. So I'm just chopping them. Jamie's gonna take them and do a final wash in the sink there. And then we're going to boil them for 20 minutes in water. That'll make it so, oops, that'll make it so we can peel them. And then once we peel them, then we'll put them and we'll water bath them. So I sent Redrick back and I didn't really look at what he was doing. I'm like, hey, go chop, chop the tops off of some dill for me. He cut the tops off my carrots Jamie was like, hey, this isn't dill. We can't use this. So. Yeah, I was like, that. if that's dill, you can smell it. You can smell it from when you open the door. Those are carrots. We'll go give these to the animals. The chickens like greens too. So I'll throw a bunch out for them. And Buttercup will make quick work of these greens here. Come on, girl. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Look, there's some beets in there. I saved some beets for you too. Just little ones. Here are the carrots that Redrick thought were dill. Hopefully they survive and make a comeback. <laughs> so our plan is to grow some more carrots. We have some spinach, but it's too hot. Like that's going to seed. So we're gonna have to clean all the Weeds out of here, but what is this? It's like I don't know what you're growing. Weeds? This is like a parsley, like a flat leaf parsley, but I don't remember planting that. No, I'm good. 
I'm going to, I'm going to get a couple of radishes because I'm going to make a spicy breakfast mix. That should be enough. All right, this is dill. I have that dried dill, but I'm going to go ahead and save the dried dill because that'll last through the winter and I want to use this fresh. Okay, back to our house to finish uh, the rest of this project. Let's get some beets canned up and uh, some zucchini pickled. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna ferment it. I'm not pickling it. I don't know if those cucumbers are gonna go in my breakfast mix. These ones? The little ones. No, well, I picked them. I've got my beets boiling so that I can peel them better and then we'll move to the next step. I've got this big zucchini. It's not huge yet, but it's bigger than we technically like to eat just fresh just because it can get like kind of woody and real fibrous. So I'm going to do a little fermentation on this. I've got some radishes. These are jalapenos. They're going to get voted off the island. I don't want it quite that hot in the morning for breakfast time. Um, but these are banana peppers. They're nice. And then these are chives. I'm going to use them as an onion substitute. I might put some of the greens in there, but really I'm just taking off the small little pieces on the bottom that are the onion part right after the root. I don't know what it's called. If you know what it's called, let me know. And we're gonna mix this all together and ferment it. This is the fermentation kit we use. We like it so much that we sell it at JanuaryVintage.com if you want one for yourself. It works really well with the Lay Parfait jars. We also have those. All right, I'm just gonna make a simple brine. This is one, this is four cups of water in here. It's been filtered. And then about a tablespoon of salt, kosher salt. You don't wanna use iodized salt for your fermentation. So four tablespoons, that's a lot of salt. You can get away with a little bit less, but you wanna make sure that, you, I think it's like 2%, don't quote me on that, look it up yourself. 2% um, uh, salt content with your fermentation so that everything works right and it doesn't go bad on you and just go rotten and you don't, you don't want that. So let that sit while we load this up. So I'm gonna do a load of zucchini, and then some of my mix of onions, peppers, and radish. Everybody has their job, nine to five, and getting drained. They settle for second best, scared to risk what the future might bring. What the future might be. It doesn't really matter about the layering. It's all gonna float around and condense as it starts fermenting. Fill this up. Next, this is a, a anti-float. Keeps it from uh, floating up. It's got a spring in there. And then you put the lid on. This is all part of the fermentation kit. I'm gonna turn it that way so as it condenses, the spring will keep pushing it down. And then it's gonna off gas. Um, so you will put this little lid on there and you will get some fluid and stuff like that in there, but it shouldn't be more than will fill over the top of that. Okay, now we let this sit for a couple days and that'll be ready to go. And I'm gonna use it in like my omelets, my scrambled eggs. You can use it pretty much any recipe that you wanna add little bit of flavor too and you can also add like garlic it's going to carry flavor really well it's best to store it in a cool dry place so i'm going to put it up in here with the baking supplies oh get in there there we are and that'll stay nice and dark in there and cool enough it'll be fine so i woke up from my little mini nap and zeb's moving right along we are straining look at that like i feel like we should be doing something with that you can no. if you want but this is Careful. So they're 
they're gonna get more red again. Like we'll put this in a different pickling brine because this may still have like a little grit and dirt in it before we peel them. So, I mean, even though we've washed them twice, so I don't wanna put this in the canning jar. I'm thinking that, I'm thinking that next time we should dye something because that's just, be sure you don't dye my house. I already found splatter. There was like a crime scene here. Look. It is gonna look like a crime scene. <laughs> I find my hands are done when I peel these. I'm gonna rinse them with cold water so that they can cool off a little bit and we'll get them peeled and in jars. I don't think I'm gonna slice them. My mom always canned them whole like this and then she sliced them later if she needed them sliced or, you know, mushed them or I feel like they pickle better peeled. sliced. Like, the... Oh, you're probably right. Yeah. I don't think my mom was pickling them. She yeah, no, no, we them. need to slice them. We are gonna make a brine, a pickling brine. So it's really simple. Two cups of vinegar to two cups of water. This is water. Vinegar and water pretty much look the same. Tablespoon of salt. And if you're doing traditional sugar, you can go ahead and do that. Since I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's disease, my doctor recommended cutting out inflammatory foods as much as I possibly can. And sugar and gluten are two of the prime culprits for inflammation. So I substitute honey. It's still technically a sugar, but it's a lot better for you to process. So three quarters cup of honey is equal to one cup of regular processed sugar. So I'm gonna do two of those in there. If you weren't doing this, you could just do two cups water, two cups vinegar, and two cups of sugar, and the one tablespoon of salt, and you got your pickling brine. We are peeling beets, and it is time for basically the crime scene, because my fingers are gonna be bright red by the time we're done here. I boiled these for about 20 minutes, and they peel so, so easy. You can almost just push it off with your hand, which I might do, because that's gonna be faster than the knife. It's been a long time since I've grown and canned beets. I did it as a kid, and I've had to look a couple things up. I probably should have just called my mom. She just knows all this stuff off the top of her head. It all came off my fingers for the most part. So just gonna slice them so that uh, we can get that good pickling for Jamie. Oh, they're gonna be slick too. This is not gonna be my favorite. I can tell you that right now. I think I'm gonna do a jar of just little ones because I've got enough. Let me see. These are all washed, sanitized. Uh, make sure you're uh, keeping all your stuff clean when you're canning. I ate a beet and my teeth are all red. They're very earthy. They grow in the ground. I mean, pinto beans taste like dirt, and I like those. You know what they need? Butter and salt. Butter and salt would be delicious. Maybe some cilantro. Can we make mashed beet burritos? You knew a lot of things with beets. Looks like a carrier. So we got Jamie over there picturesque with the dogs. She's she's currently listing the thrift hall. Not just playing a game over there, she's working hard. <laughs> I have one game on my phone, I don't play it very often. Okay, this honey and vinegar brine, it's a pretty caramel color. I'm probably gonna have to make more because these are 750 milliliters or three quarters of a liter. So almost a quart on these jars. I got seven of them. Yeah, I'm gonna have to make more brine. There's a max fill line on these Lay Parfait jars. We sell these at our shop, jamierayvintage.com. Super fun. We can get more lids and they look amazing. All right, my lid's not on here tight. It's just sitting, my water's about an inch under the top of the lids. I couldn't quite fit as many as I had in there, so I just put them in this other pot. Water bathing, you don't have to pressure them. You just cook them for the right amount of time in the water and they're good to go. They'll seal and be safe. Alexa, set a timer for 30 minutes. So in between canning, also playing pool guy, Jamie made the cake and it's got, she's got it all decorated. There's a dinosaur theme going on for the pool party. You can see the little dinosaurs back there on the table. The beets are in there right now. They've got about 
oh, 20 minutes left on their 30 minute timer. So I'm going to get this pool clean in a hurry as good as I can do in about 20 minutes and we'll get the beats out. Timer has gone off. I've got the heat off. It is time to pull these out. All right, thanks for coming with us today and doing some gardening, some canning. We got to replant those beets. Uh, got a lot done actually in between all the prep process and got a couple of things fermented too. If you guys want to follow along, make sure you guys are hitting that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. Next week, we'll do some more videos cooking with what we've been canning. The awesome cake Jamie made. It even got some freeze-dried Skittles around the edge. <laughs>